what is happening in Toronto, Canada's real estate market right now, how government policies, new mortgage rules, increasing interest rates, foreign buyer tax, rent controls, fluctuating supply and demand, and reduced affordability are affecting the housing market. So is it going up or down? Are there real opportunities in this rapidly shifting and adjusting market? Are you wondering, is it a good time to buy, sell, or invest? Hi, my name is Sharjeet Al Haddad. I'm a realtor at Toronto Home Realty, and I help people make educated and smart home buying and selling decisions. Toronto Real Estate Board's first quarter and May 2018 numbers are in, and it certainly paints a very interesting picture. Thanks for joining me, guys, for Toronto and the GTA's Regional Real Estate Market May 2018 update with detailed market analysis, predictions, and tips. If you are planning to buy, sell, or invest, this report is for you. Today, we are going to take a deep dive into Toronto Real Estate Board's market numbers. We will look at some historic data, and we will cover all of the GTS regional markets, from Durham to Halton, York to Peel, Simcoe to Toronto. Yes, we will cover in great details almost every important aspect of housing market across GTA. And we will look at, at uh, what actually transpired in the market this year from Jan 2018 to April and May 2018. And a quick year over year comparison as well. Plus, we are also going to cover Toronto Real Estate Board's 2018 MLS Home Price Index, benchmark prices, regional and sub-markets, macro and micro-markets, stats and economic indicators. We will look through the lens of Toronto Real Estate Board's actual MLS transactions and data like days on market, months of inventory, active listings. In the micro-market uh, segment, we are going to cover detached, semis, towns and condo apartments. All this info will help us paint much clearer picture and make us uh, uh, like more make, make us understand and have more sense of how the overall Toronto and GTA market is shaping and how the different market segments are performing. Now about the media and perception. I know you've been hearing some crazy doom and gloom news in the media about GTA real estate market like the sky is falling sales are down by 30 to 40 percent year over year and the bubble is bursting and all that trust me your home value is not down by 40 percent to put things in perspective i would just simply say that uh, that it is a very unfair and unrealistic uh, it is very unfair and unrealistic to compare and match our 2018 sales figure with the historic record high buyer frenzy peak of Last year, a lot has happened during this period. New mortgage rules, OSFI stress tests, uh, Bank of Canada's multiple interest rate hikes, foreign buyer tax, special speculation tax, uh, and Ontario Fair Housing, 16-point Fair Housing Plan. And it is not surprising to see the market reflect those changes and adjust through it. In order to understand better and separate facts from fiction, let's practically dissect and understand what exactly is happening in the GTA real estate market. Let's first have a quick glance at Toronto Real Estate Board's historic price trend graph. Here, uh, we can clearly see long-term consistent growth in the housing market with some short-term dips and volatility. Historic low interest rates, strong immigration, and job market propelled the housing market, and property values almost doubled every 10 years during the last two decades. And now, Let's look at Toronto Real Estate Board's 2018 numbers for the first five months from Jan to May 2018. Here we can see the uptrend in spring market sales. They have been gradually increasing and gaining momentum. In, in Jan, we saw 4,019 sales, 5,175 in Feb, 7,228 in March, 7,792 sales in April, and 7,834 in May. The total number of sales almost doubled from Jan to May 2018. Now, active listings, they are also continuously increasing. 11,894 in Jan, then 13,362 in Feb, 15,971 in March, 18,206 in April, and 20,919 in May. Active listings in May almost increased by 50% compared to January. 
Now let's check out months of inventory. It's a very important number as months of inventory defines if it's a seller's market or a buyer's market or a balance market. Generally speaking, anything less than four months of inventory represents somewhat a seller's market with less than one month of inventory represents a super hot seller's market like the one we saw in 2016 and early 2017. Here uh, uh, we saw almost half a month of inventory. Uh, reducing months of in inventory means faster increases in prices, lesser days on market, and usually gets more pronounced in certain high demand, low supply, and more affordable housing areas and segments. In such markets, uh, we see multiple offers, bidding wars, and sold over asking with cleaner offers and conditions favoring sellers. And in markets where you see higher months of inventory, say like uh, more in higher threes, more particularly between four and five months, it represents a balanced market, kind of tilting towards the buyer side. And when you see four or five to six months or more months of inventory, it is a buyer's market. The buyers have more leverage and options to choose from. And they can put conditions in their offer and dictate their terms. And this is where you will see increased competition between the sellers where pricing are going down and days of market are going up and properties taking much longer to sell. Now let's go through months of inventory for 2018. Here we have three months of inventory in, in Jan, 2.6 months in Feb, 2.2 in March, 2.3 in April, and in May, 2.7 uh, months of inventory. We can see the months of inventory is over, overall decreasing in first quarter of 2018, but it started increasing April onwards, indicating more sellers are opting to list as we go deeper into the uh, spring market. Now let's look at average DTS sale prices. In Jan, it was uh, 737,000, and in Feb, it was 668,000. In March, 785,000. In April, it was, was 804,000. And in May, 805,000, indicating that average sale prices have continued to climb. We can clearly see the, uh, that when months of inventory reduces, the average sales, uh, sales price goes up and properties sell faster, resulting in reduced days on market. We can see here 32 days in market in Jan, followed by 25 in Feb, 20 in March, 20 in April, and uh, 20 in May. Market is showing signs of recovery and it is starting to warm up, which indicates a very healthy market. But keep in mind, our average sale prices are still significantly lower, approximately 113,000 less compared to average sale price April 2000. 18 last year. And now let's see year over year comparison April and May 2018 versus 2017. Well, it's going to be a fair comparison as uh, we have the new stress tests and new regulations in place for both. So we have 7,792 sales in April 2018 as opposed to 11,468 sales in April 2017. And we have 7,834 sales in May 2018 versus 10,066 sales in May 2017. In April, year over year sales plunged to almost 32% and by 22% in May 2018, which is a big difference in sales. But comparatively, it's still a much lower and a lot better number than the 40% difference in sales what we saw earlier this year in March 2018. Uh, 18 comparison year over year. And now uh, let's see a uh, quick year over year comparison for April and May 2018 versus 2017. Well, it's going to be a fair comparison as we have the new stress test and the new regulation in place for both. So we have 7,792 sales in April 2018 as opposed to 11,468 sales in April. 2017 and we have 7,834 sales in May 2018 versus 10,066 10, sales in May 2017. In April, year over year sales plunged by 32% and by 22% in May year over year comparison, which is still a big difference in sales, but comparatively, it's still a much lower and a lot better number than the 40% difference in sales what we saw in a year over year uh, comparison in March. 2018. Uh, active listings 18,206 in April 2018 versus 12,926 in April 2017 and in May 2018 we have 20,919 active listings uh, versus 18,477 and active listings surged by almost 
41% year over year in April 2018, which later dropped to 13.2% uh, year over year in May 2018. Months of inventory, 2.3 in April 2018 compared to 1.1 months uh, in a April 2017 and in May 2018, 2.7 months of inventory as opposed to 1.8 months in May 2017. Still a better number than the 0.6 months of inventory what we saw early last year in March 2017. It was crazy and super hot market where prices were going up by almost 30% to 35% year, uh, year over year. But uh, April 2017's 1.1 month of inventory was still a very hot market. Remember, this was the time when the, the government intervened and they introduced new regulations and policies to cool down uh, the market. Now, coming back to our May 2018's 2.7 months of inventory, it is still a very strong and healthy market, showing an increase of almost 50% in uh, month of inventory year over year. But it's, it is significantly lower than our April 2018's uh, 109 percent month of inventory but uh, it is still a higher uh, it's still higher than our seasonal April 2018 numbers Aver average price is eight hundred four thousand dollars in April uh, 2018 versus uh, nine hundred eighteen thousand in April 2017 indicating an average price is minus 12.4 percent compared to last year our market was off by almost 114 thousand in May 2018 average price is sitting at 805,000 as opposed to 862,000 in May 2017. Market expected to recover, but definitely it's not going to reach the previous record high levels uh, of early uh, last year 2017. Days on market 20 uh, in April uh, 2018 versus nine days on market in April 2017, showing that property took a lot longer, almost 122% uh, more time to sell. In May 2018, 20 days on market versus 11 days on market in May 2017, showing it took 81.8% more time to sell the property. Well, uh, we have to keep in mind uh, that a lot uh, of changes took place in the market in terms of interest rate hikes, foreign buyer tax, rent controls, mortgage, uh, stress tests and so on but I believe the market has shown resilience and it is still in good shape and going strong and now let's put things in perspective by looking at micro market different market segments like detached semi detached condo towns and condo apartments and try to understand what's happening there we have 3.7 months of inventory in detached market with days on market sitting at 22 semi detached uh, two months of inventory uh, and days on market at 15 and condo townhouse we have two months of inventory and 21 days on market attached and row townhouses months of inventory 2.4 days on, on market at 19 now lastly but importantly condo apartments we have 1.7 months of inventory with 19 days on market which indicates a very strong demand for condos limited supply for mid-level affordable uh, housing options like sammies and towns uh, houses coupled with reduced affordability factor that is approximately 25 percent less purchasing power has forced the buyers to adjust and look at condo market as a viable option both in terms of uh, renting or buying as uh, it, it's, it's becoming uh, increasingly difficult for most buyers to afford and qualify for highly priced detached home uh, it is a natural choice to go for condos. A quick fact, in today's uh, market, you need approximately $100,000 income to qualify and buy a small average condo in Toronto. Now, uh, let's have a quick look at Toronto Real Estate Board's all the regional markets, MLS statistics and numbers. Let's check the Toronto Real Estate Board's uh, MLS Home price index and benchmark prices for all of the areas for May 2018. Uh, Toronto State Board's uh, MLS home price index is a more accurate representation, like uh, it's an apple to apple approach as it takes into account typical property features, amenities, and property types, reflecting more accurate values and scalable uh, percentage uh, changes uh, long term in terms of prices so let's uh, look at toronto state board uh, mls gta and uh, hpi composite uh, index so
So index at uh, 254.1, benchmark price is at 717,400, year over year change is minus 5.4%. Single family detached index at 252.2, benchmark price at uh, $934,000, uh, uh, and year over year change is minus 10.1%. 1.9% single family detached index at 256.6 benchmark price at 7721800 with year over year change minus 8.46% townhouses uh, townhouses index at 255.254.5 benchmark price at 564600 year over change changes 4.29 apartments index at 250.8 benchmark price at 501000 uh, uh, and then changes almost 8.2%. Uh, Halton Region Composite Index at 265.1, benchmark is 8, 854,000, year-over-year year change minus 3.84, single-family detached index at 263.2, benchmark at 970,800, year-over-year year change is minus 6.20, single-family attached index at 271.2, benchmark at 693,800, and year-over-year year change minus 4.2%. Townhouse. Uh, index at 278.2, benchmark at, two, uh, at 513, 100, and year over year is minus 4.3%. Apartment index at 259.5, benchmark 479, 900, and year over year is plus 10.10%. 10 .10, uh, Peel region, composite index at 242.9, benchmark at 689, 800, year over year is minus 5.34, single family detached index at 240.1 benchmark at 847,700 year over year change minus 7.33 percent single family attached index at 244.1 benchmark at 624,900 year over year change minus 6.83 percent townhouse index at 240.4 benchmark at 516,100 year over year change minus 6.28 apartment index at 240.9 benchmark 414,100 and year over year change plus 4.15 percent now let's look at city of toronto composite index at 259 benchmark 839 600 year over year change uh, plus 1.01 percent single family detached index at 256.1 benchmark uh, at 1,123,800 year over year change minus 8.60 single family attached index at 267.4 benchmark uh, 891,400 uh, year over year change uh, eight minus 3.99 percent townhouse index at 261.8 benchmark 631 700 year over year change plus 1.04 percent apartment index at 256.7 benchmark 527 100 year over year change plus 10.12 percent york region composite index at 256.7 benchmark 866 600 year over year change minus 15.59 percent single family detached index at 263.1 benchmark is a uh, million and uh, 1200 dollars year over year change is minus 17.50 percent single family attached index at 257.2 benchmark 744 100 year over change minus 17.56 percent townhouse index at 235.3 benchmark is uh, 602,400 year-over-year change minus 10.57 percent apartment index at 218.5 benchmark 483,000 year-over-year year change plus 1.02 percent Durham region composite index at 239.7 benchmark 559,800 year-over-year year change minus 8.89 uh, percent single family uh, detached index at 235.5 benchmark 612,000 uh, dollars and year-over-year year change is minus 9. Point 0.7% single family attached index at 245 benchmark 49300 year over year change minus 9.49% townhouse index at 247 benchmark 391700 uh, year over year change is minus 9.19% apartment index at 241.2 benchmark 411300 year over year change plus 1.15% Dufferin County uh, composite uh, index at 255.4 to 254.2 benchmark 582 700 year over year change is minus 1.97 percent uh, single family detached index at 265.3 benchmark 604 600 year over year change is minus 2.1 one zero percent single family attached index at 247 benchmark 462 900 year over year change is minus 2.76 percent now simcoe county composite index at 248.2 benchmark 557 200 year over year change minus 8.75 percent single family detached index at 243.3 benchmark 565 600 year over year change is minus 9.08 percent single family attached index 
at uh, 254.8 benchmark is at 477.400. Year over year change is minus 6.22%. And uh, now a quick summary of uh, MLS home price index stats. The apartment market, all regional markets across GTA and the city of Toronto except Durham region are showing positive gains year over year. The city of Toronto and the Halton market being the strongest sitting at top with plus 10.12% uh, and plus 10.10% respectively. In townhouse market, we're seeing values decline all across 905 with the most in York region down by almost 10.57%. And in contrast, Toronto's townhouse market showed an uptrend gaining plus 1.02% uh, year over year. Single family attached market values declined all across GTA and Toronto with the York region being affected the most where values dropped by uh, minus 17.56 percent single family detached market seems to be the most adversely affected market overall uh, where we saw uh, GTA average property values decline by almost 10.19 percent year over year across GTA and in, in, even including the Toronto with the York region uh, detached market declining the most by 17.50%. Now we will have a quick overview of supply and demand stats. Let's check Toronto State Board's regional micro market report with months of inventory, days on market, average sales listing price percentage and uh, also a quick year away. I'm going to put the uh, slides on the screen for you to have a look and then we're going to uh, quickly discuss and summarize all that towards the end. So we have gone through a ton of data and stats. Now let me put everything in a nutshell and give you my opinion. So what are the trends and projections for 2018 GTA real estate market? Let's look at economic indicators. Canada is set to admit nearly 1 million immigrants over the course of the next three years. Almost 300,000 immigrants a year, with majority of those 120,000 or more likely to settle in Toronto GTA. The GTA's population is projected to increase from 6.7 million in 2016 to 9.6 million by 2041. Currently, we have 494,525 international students across Canada. The number is expected to grow by 20% a year. Employment growth in March 2018 was at 3.2%. Unemployment rate March 2018 was at 58 GDP forecast for 2018 is at 2.2%. Inflation at 2.2%. In April 2018, Bank of Canada's overnight rate in May was at 1.25%. Bank of Canada's five-year posted mortgage rate the fixed uh, rate is at 5.34 and uh, discounted prime rate in May at 3.45% and bond yields 10 years at 2.33%, 3 years at 1.99% and historic low rental vacancy rate of 0.70 uh, 2018 for uh, Toronto. All these factors indicate growing demand for housing driven by strong economic fundamentals and if the the government and the policy makers and the construction it doesn't keep up uh, with the demand there may be a potential long-term shortage looming on the supply side which will eventually heat things up again in both rental and resale market i see housing market as a quality long-term investment as regional economy immigration job market and demand is expected to stay strong and I think it will be a very healthy and balanced spring and summer market as the buyer or waiting and sitting on the sidelines will come back. Of course, buyers with all the changes in lending criteria, reduced purchasing power and stringent guidelines in place will have to make some realistic adjustments in terms of their expectations, like the size of the property and the distance they are willing to travel. Basically, they will have to compromise or may just have to save and wait a little longer. Coming back to the supply side, traditionally we have more home sellers 
increase inventory in, in the spring and the summer market. And if we combine uh, it with the reduced affordability factor, I think it will likely keep the overall market in check and prevent the price from uh, escalating too fast or at first it may just stay flat for a while in certain segments. And expect, expect some corrections in the higher tier housing uh, market segment. There will be higher demand and shortage of inventory for more affordable housing like condos and townhouses. Anything uh, priced between $350,000 to say $600,000 range in and around GTA within 60 to 90 minute radius, close to transit, job markets, highways, schools, universities, they should fly. They should be in high demand. And uh, expect more competition, multiple offers, and even sold over asking, particularly in the lower to mid-tier price range. Like for example, we can already see high demand for condos and shortage of supply in the city of Toronto with just 1.5 months of inventory. Expect a strong condo market for the remainder of 2018. And in contrast, expect more balance uh, market, less frenzy in detached home market. Of course, uh, there will be some neighborhoods in and around the core, you might see strong detached home market. But uh, by and large, in most GTA markets and suburbs away from the core, it will be a little weaker market too. So overall, in detached home market, we will likely see lesser sales year over year, more inventory, more competing listings, somewhat softening prices in certain areas like we are already seeing in York region with more than 6.5 months of inventory, where prices plunge almost 20% year over year uh, during the first uh, quarter year over year comparison. Expect more days on market uh, around million dollar plus range and more particularly in the higher price luxury market segment like Toronto C12, an area with multi-million dollar properties where we are currently seeing over 4.2 months of inventory. We have already seen sales drop by almost 50% year over year during the first quarter of 2018. So where do I see opportunities in this market? I think I think it's a great time for condo owners to move up and get into bigger detached homes as they will be able to sell their home faster, their condos faster and get good value for their condos. And it is not all bad for the freehold and detached home sellers unless you bought it during the first quarter crazy peak of 2017. It is still a pretty healthy market. They can still cash in and get good value even if they bought their properties three to four or more years ago. Tip for the buyers, it is not always a good idea to time the market as markets fluctuate. So the best time to buy is when you are ready and you can afford it and you truly need it. So my tip for the sellers now, if you want to succeed in today's market, don't overprice. Price your property correctly and realistically. Stage it properly and market it professionally. Trust me, your property will sell within a reasonable time frame at an acceptable price range. And why it is critically important to work with a best qualified real estate professional you, your home is the most valuable asset and one of the biggest transaction of your life. And today's real estate market is becoming very challenging and very comparative. It is like a, a combination of price war and a beauty contest. In this era of digital age, where 90% of the buyers are like tech savvy and most are age around 35 or under, simply listing the property on MLS won't work. According to National Association of Realtors recent study, 95% of buyers uh, started their search for their dream home online 
and 55% of them actually uh, bought the house what they first saw online. In order to maximize your chances to succeed and not to miss out uh, on these potential buyers, as a prudent seller, you must attract and engage with the target audience. And for that, you have to be big on marketing. So big on marketing means bad representation, visual communication. You have to start things right, even before your property hits MLS, like uh, pre-listing online marketing, uh, social media campaigns, professional staging, and leveraging the state of the art technology like 3D virtual reality, uh, 24 by seven open house tours and edge high definition photos, drone and 360 immersive walkthrough uh, professional uh, videos. Targeted social media campaigns and again, importantly, pricing it realistically are the key for you to succeed in today's market. This is why this is becoming increasingly important for you to hire a true real estate professional with market knowledge, marketing tools, good negotiation skills, property uh, property value assessment skills, and who is also able to understand your needs, guide and protect your interests. I am talking with my 19 years of diverse advertising and marketing experience, working with Fortune 500 companies with successful track record managing their challenging multi-million dollar out of home media uh, campaigns, innovative uh, result-oriented brand and visual communication projects. Myself or any seasoned realtor uh, will be more than happy to help and navigate you through every step of your real estate journey. So if you find this information insightful please do uh, like it share comment and, and subscribe and do share this valuable real estate information with your friends and family use this market intelligence and analysis to identify opportunities that align with your goals capitalize and make better home buying and selling decisions amidst this rapidly changing and shifting real estate market. So if you have any questions, need any advice, or you would like to do a custom CMA or a report regarding a specific property or a neighborhood or any investment, please feel free to contact me at 416-836-7838 or visit my website www.sharjils.com and I'll be more than happy to assist you. So think real estate, think Sharjil, your friend for real.